Hey, it's DIY Gemini, and today we're creating this really cute two-piece vacation set using my old bed sheets. So let's get into it. Okay, so today I wanted to do this two-piece set I found on Pinterest. I really like how the tea is kind of boxy, and like you have these like um, kind of like cutout details on the side with like a tying cute little thing at the bottom. It's super cute, and it's very simple. Um, and then the, the pants are like kind of like culottes, kind of very loungy, um, very easy, has pockets. Of course, we're going to have to have some pockets. Um, yeah, it looks very effortless. You could wear this as a swim cover up. You could just wear this around town if you wanted to. I'm going on vacation in May to Greece, so I wanted to make some vacation fits. So that's why I wanted to do this two piece set. I also want to do another set in a next video as well. Another reason why I wanted to do this project is because for the fabric for this project is actually going to be my old bed sheets that I have. So I have this white linen sheets. I got these sheets in 2020. So it's been four years I've had it. And I love these sheets because they're 100% linen. So they're very breathable. And I literally just use these sheets for the last four years, like consistently without rotating to other sheets. So I would wash it every two weeks, put it back on, wash it in two weeks, put it back on. And naturally they wear out, right? Because I didn't rotate the sheets like I should have and got another set of sheets like a proper an adult. But here we are. Um, so naturally, hold on, let me find it. Oh, naturally, there's a huge hole in it now. <laughs> so, um... Yeah, so since these are 100% linen, I thought why well, waste it and throw it away? I could just repurpose it into something else because linen is so good for summer and warmer weather because um, it is very breathable and light and airy and just perfect. So why not use it? So let's go make an outfit. <laughs> so I have my, my fabric cut out to a little bit more manageable piece to create the top. And um, what I want to do is put two layers for each piece. So put two layers in the front, two layers in the back, because mine is quite translucent. If you like look through it, you can kind of see through. Um, so I just wanted a little bit extra security of making it two layers. If you have a thicker fabric or more denser fabric, you don't really need to do that. But I'd rather be safe than sorry of covering everything. So... <laughs> Uh, yeah, so that's what we're doing. I have plenty of fabric because I have a whole bed sheet in the fitted sheet. Take our fabric and put it on the fold. So we have the folded side this side. And then we'll take our model t-shirt that we liked. We're also going to put that on a fold. So we'll take our folded end and match the folded end of our fabric as well. So that lines up. And sorry for choosing a white shirt to model this on our white linen fabric, but that's, that's what I got. So, <laughs> um, but yeah, so we're going to match that to the side. So the folded edge matches the folded edge of our fabric. And since we're not really using the sleeves for this, because this is going to be a sleeveless top, basically, a more femme muscle tea if you will <laughs> maybe i don't know we're going to trace our shirt using this outline of our t-shirt all the way around we will worry about seam allowance later i will add that after we draw our templates first our little pattern first so as you can see we have everything folded we're going to follow along this here like that and just mark it with our marker. I have a washable fabric marker. I also measured my length of from the shoulder to the bottom hem. I want it to be roughly around 15 inches. So I'm going to mark that as well. So we're going to do like half inch seam allowance for everything. So I'm going to just draw this 
seam allowance. I'm going to fold this again this way. So I'm going to be cutting four pieces of this one. And if you have a thick enough fabric that you do not have to do this, by all means, you don't have to do that. All right, we have total of four pieces for the top so far. We have two pieces for the back, and then we have two pieces for the front side. Um, they're basically almost the same, except that we made the neckline a little bit lower for the front, which is usual for most t-shirts. Another advantage of me doing it in that I have two layers for each part of this is that I'm basically gonna sew all the way around like this and then just flip it inside out. And I don't have to worry about finishing the seams and raw hems. Otherwise you would just do a roll hemmed, a rolled hem if you were doing one layer instead of two, like I am. So I'm gonna just sew all the way around um, the top here. But before we do that, we are gonna create the ties that go on the shirt first. All right, so we have four strips that are an inch and a quarter in height and then 15 inches in length. You can make this whatever dimensions you want. We're basically gonna make our own bias tape. So we are going to take our strips, fold them in half all the way down, and then we're gonna fold the ends to the middle and it'll look something like this, where it's folded like this in the middle and that's basically our bias tape. And then we'll fold it again one more time in this, um, into itself. And then it's gonna look like that. And we're just gonna sew a straight stitch all the way down. Sometimes starting sewing on this is kind of hard because it gets trapped within here. So it's nice to have a little starter piece, some scrap fabric first, and then we'll place this in there as well. And then we can cut off the scrap. For the very end, we are going to tuck in one side in there so that the, all the raw edges are in the inside of the string. So now it looks like this. Very nice. So we're gonna keep doing that for the rest of the strings. We have our front and back pieces now but I'm gonna make some changes. So I realized since I have linen, which has no stretch to it, making this collar tight to my neck like I wanted is not going to work without a stretch fabric, say like a regular t-shirt knit. This has some stretch, but not really. So what I'm gonna do is make some alterations to the back. So we have these right sides together. We're gonna to cut right down the middle and then basically we're gonna add like a button for it to button back on, just like you see in some tops where they don't have any stretch in the neckline, and that's how you get to get into your top. Did it about five inches down. So just like that. And we're still gonna sew all the way around with a half inch seam allowance, but we're gonna put our strings in here. So I'm gonna measure, hmm, I would say like, six inches, seven inches from the bottom. But since this is right sides facing together, we are gonna put this in sandwich in between our top and bottom layer. And then we'll do the same for the other side. I pinned it all the way around and then I made two little different markers here so that I know to not sew here because that's what we're gonna use to turn this inside out. So sewing all the way around this way and stopping there. So let's do that. Also ended up reinforcing right here because there's gonna be a lot of stress there as well. 
Right, so we have it all sewn up. Let's turn it inside out. Hopefully we're looking good. One thing about using this linen, it's gonna be kind of wrinkly, kind of constantly, um, but that's kind of the vibe. I don't need it to be perfect. I want it to be comfy and relaxed. So it's gonna look kind of wrinkly, but that's apparently trending. So I'm trendy now, apparently. I know, that kind of hurts for me to say, actually. I don't like that. I'm gonna use my marker to poke out the corners. Okay, we have the front. <gasps> I think she looks good so far. The strings look really nice. Let's do the back. <laughs> Unlike a regular t-shirt, we're not gonna do like the sides because these are gonna be open like our inspo. So we're just gonna do the shoulders a straight stitch across. I have not yet hemmed the, the hole that we had to use to turn it right side out. So we're gonna put right sides together and sew it. And then that's gonna flip over into the right side facing out. Okay, straight stitch. Oh my God, we're almost done with the top, you guys. I'm so hyped, you guys. The reason why I didn't close up that hole yet because I wanted to make sure my head actually fits in this hole that I made. <laughs> um, remember we did the slot in the back to make the back a little bit bigger so it stretches out and we're gonna put a button. Oh, barely, but yeah. So she looks not bad. She definitely has given bib vibes, but <laughs> hopefully with the pants it will all come together and it'll look a lot better. Um, but I'm going to press all of the seams so that it looks a little bit more finished. So I have pressed all the seams down, make it nice and crispy, and also press the seams of the shoulders towards the back so it's bulky towards the back and not the front. So now I just wanna do a top stitch all the way around the perimeter and around the neckline so it makes it a little bit more finished looking and that's our last step for the top and I am stoked because it's looking pretty good and I don't want to jinx myself but I haven't had a major major other than like adjusting the straps I haven't had a major screw up so knock on wood fake wood or something that everything goes well I was not loving how long the sleeves or faux sleeves were going on my shoulders. So I ended up tucking in the shoulders in. So the silhouette is a little bit more streamlined. And I think it looks a little bit better this way. All right, so I took a little break. I got something to eat because I was a little procrastinating and also because I was hungry. So we are going to be making the pants now, which is a little bit more scary for me because I don't know, it just seems more complicated. I'm not really sure. But anyways, I'm actually going to be copying a pair of pants I already have. So this is uh, high waisted, which I really like, and it's going to be the length that I need. So I don't have to make too many adjustments. I'm going to add pockets as well. Let's trace our pants onto our linen fabric here and let's start. <laughs> so we are gonna start with four layers of the linen fabric. So let me cut out some pieces to a little bit more manageable size in the big bed sheet and I'll be right back. So here is the back pattern that's what it's looking like sorry it's kind of messy doing a half inch seam allowance again to give me a little bit more room so there's our back panel here's our front panel they're almost identical the back panel is just a little bit deeper of a cut in here rather than the front where it's a little bit more shallow because we have our bum that we have to account for you should have two back panels and two front panels so our next step is taking the front piece, matching it with our back piece. We are going to match these corners here. 
And then you, you'll you see that the back is a little bit wider than the front. That's okay. We'll still match the edges and pin those. So let's first start pinning this inner corner first. I'm going to pull it to the edge to match that up as well. Okay. We need it wider for the back because of our bum. Remember that. So now... We will sew along this long edge and then this long edge. And that's it for now. We're going to do that for both legs. When we sew them together, we're going to make some pockets. I got this from online. Thank you to Helen's Closet Patterns for this um, pattern. So <laughs> I tried to draw the bean by myself. Did not work out so well. So I have four. I have folded this in half twice, so I have four layers that I'm going to be cutting out for the two pockets. Always use non-fabric scissors to cut non-fabric things. Do not use your fabric scissors to cut your other stuff that's not fabric. That's how you dull your scissors. You don't want that. Now that we have our pockets, two sets here, we are going to put that on, see how the curve is on that side? We're going to put the pocket up here. So I'm going to unpin this real quick because I totally almost forgot to put that in. So while I have this other side pinned, I put the pocket in between the front and the back panels. So we have both two layers of the pocket. One layer is going to attach to the back side. So I'm going to pin that to the back here. And then what the other layer is going to attach to a, our front side. I did put our pocket four inches down, but that also depends on where you like your pocket, depending on your proportions. So what I'm going to do now is just sew the pocket on to their respective panels. So one layer to the back, one layer to the front. We'll do that for both legs. So now that we have our respective pocket, we're going to flip it outward. Since I have linen, I could just press it with my hands. But uh, if you are not working with linen, I would recommend uh, using an iron to press down this seam. We're doing a top stitch along this line here so that that prevents the pocket from wanting to come out when you are wearing the garment. We have our pocket now on there. Leave this pocket sticking out. So now we are going to sew along the parallels here except this when we get to the pocket we're going to sew here and then along the pocket and then up to the waistband so we are not not going to be sewing through here to close the pocket we are going to go this way this way and this way Right now you should have two legs. We are going to turn one of them right side out. The other one we're going to leave inside out. And we are going to tuck the leg into each other. So you see how we have our opening here. This is right side out. This is inside out still. Um, we're going to tuck our leg right into it there. It's going to start to look like pants, y'all. So what we want to do is find the crotch of the inside and match it with the crotch of the outside leg and pin it around. So we're going to sew along this U here. I also finished the edges a little bit with a zigzag stitch on the edge so it doesn't unravel because it does fray a lot. I don't have a serger so this is an alternative. You just use a zigzag stitch all the way around the edge. Alright, 
So we still have our pants inside out. I actually added some extra paneling on the sides because I made it a little too small. So don't mind those out. I actually added some extra paneling on the sides because I made it a little too small. So don't mind those. So I somehow forgot to record this part, but to get your waistband, you're gonna measure your waist in minus one to one and a half inches and sew it into a loop. We have our elastic sewn into the loop. I have it sewn on a diagonal, that which is optional. You can totally do a straight stitch. This just eliminates some bulk when you're doing it a diagonal like this. Before we put our elastic on, I want to snip up some corners so that we can match up the middle. So we have one, we have one notch there. So that marks the front and the back. And then we're gonna have one notch in this corner here. That just tells us where the side, where we should stretch enough to meet the side seams and the middle. You'll notice that the elastic will be not as wide as your pants, which is what we want because we want it to cinch in, right? So we're gonna take our elastic and loop it into our pants. All right, and then we'll find that center notch that we made. We'll find the center of the pants seam. We're gonna get that pinned on. Then we'll do the same for the back. Match that notch to your back middle seam. Then we'll do the sides. We're going to sew the elastic all the way around to our pants. When you're sewing, you're going to be sewing by stretching the elastic, but be careful not to stretch your actual fabric itself. You just want to stretch the elastic. And then we're just going to sew all the way around with a zigzag stitch that allows for stretch. And then after that, we'll fold it over and then we'll close off the tube. This is what our waistband looks like now. Basically, it's folded over twice. And I finished it with bias tape before I folded it over the second time. Um, I should have finished the edge first before sewing the elastic on, but here we are, it's fine. It's on the inside, so you can't really tell anyways. Um, so our last step is hemming our pant legs. So it's kind of similar. We're just gonna do a double roll, one to roll in for cover the raw hem, and then another one to complete the hem. So just a simple straight stitch all the way around. Okay, thank you so much for watching today's video. I am so happy how it came out. It is super airy, it is super light, it's very comfortable. It was free 99 because we used some sheets that I had already. Um, definitely recommend if you don't have sheets of your own to use, go to the thrift store, the textile section. There's usually a bunch of sheets that are there for a whole set for like three to four dollars to five dollars. So very, very low stakes if you're doing a project for the first time. Um, instead of buying it raw and new from the fabric store. So definitely recommend doing that. You get large sheets um, for really, really cheap. Um, so I do have leftover fabric that I'm gonna be using for our next project. I'm making another outfit in two weeks as well. That one's gonna be a little bit more femme and we are gonna attempt to dye it, which is the first time I've ever done that. So that's gonna be really interesting. It looks fairly easy, but yeah, <laughs> anyways. Um, if you haven't already, I also made some other outfits last year for another vacation. So if you want to check out those, there's going to be linked in the cards above and in the description below as well. So yeah, I will see you in two weeks to make that outfit and uh, see you then.
Bye. Thank mm-hmm. you.